It is coming. I don't know how we're gonna get out of this one. I'm gonna call it a crash. Okay, how are we doing on the list? Um, well, we've got the big things now. We just need to get like parsley. All parsley. You guys do better when you're away from people. Like, look, we're in these little tiny lanes. I just want to, Miguel, can I take a second and explain something? Can I get on my soapbox? Yeah. Okay, he's used to, he's used to this. So if you guys get upset because you're trying to balance your coffee in the little area and you flip down the thing and the thing flips down and then it knocks over your coffee and it spills and you find yourself getting really frustrated and then you, you, then you feel bad because you're getting really frustrated over such a small thing and so you're like, oh. I just want to say, you shouldn't feel bad. Don't feel bad from being frustrated. We are animals. We're not meant to do this. We're supposed to go and grab a piece of meat, right? We're supposed to go fell an elk, drag it across the dirt, throw it on a fire, right? That's our DNA. Yeah. That's our DNA. We're not supposed to mess with little flippy deals, all right? So don't feel bad about getting frustrated. All right, let's get that done. Okay. What, uh, what triggered our we better go camping. Why did, why did we say, we better freaking go camping? Um, school, school sucks. <laughs> are, you, are you having a hard time at school, buddy? Yeah, <laughs> but I like that. So Miguel is doing the air down walk around and the way we air down is um, walk around the truck and by the time you walk around the truck full time, you're aired down. Okay, so what does coming out here do, Miguel? Um, it's refreshing and gives you a clear mind. Very good. Um, I agree with you. You get to go fishing. It gives you perspective, doesn't it? Yeah. It is Halloween, and so Miguel and I are also we got fun. We got going to Carve a pumpkin. Carve a pumpkin. And uh, get ghost stories. Yeah. Good girl. Okay, you guys, this is Slick Rock Trail. I love it. My, my friend Mike will tell you uh, his YouTube channel is Social Pants. He does Ford Raptor overlanding, and he's been coming out with me quite a while. He'll tell you my view is a skewed, and so I, what I think is medium or easy, you might think is extremely difficult. So that's something to keep in in mind. Um, now, if you look at the definitions in our in our app, Overland Bound One, we try and make definitions that are not ambiguous. So, for example, a certain class of trail it'll say specifically no incline over 24 inches. So that's not ambiguous, right? Um, you can't argue that, that's just, a, that's just a fact. So we try and do that. If you read those definitions, you'll understand how difficult a, a trail actually is. I'm following Miguel. You might see that the brake lights are on quite a bit. Um, you do two foot driving on the trail. It actually exercises mechanical sympathy by giving a little bit of tension on your drivetrain and it makes for a much smoother ride because your truck isn't going boom, 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 falling down rocks. You're feathering in the brake and using the accelerator at the same time to keep a little bit of tension on the drive line, and then it's just crawling down the rock because the drivetrain is under just a little bit of tension. Takes some skill, feels unnatural if you've been driving for a while, but on the trail, it's, uh, it's a big deal. It makes a big difference. Little driver, I'm sorry, hold. A little passenger, 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 there. Nice and soft there, yeah? 
Nice and soft, nice and slow. There you go. Um, you got something you want to scoop out the seeds into so we could roast them tonight? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Eventually you're going to ask me, why do you do it? Why did you create a community, an app, make videos? And I have my personal reasons, but sometimes the civilized world oh, seems a little crazy, or maybe just too big. Out here, no matter how big the adventure, moments like this feel right. When I started this adventure in 2010, I never imagined it would be my children to show me Adventure is necessary. And right now, that's good enough for me. It's chilly. It's not cold. You know that, you know that cold, you take gl your gloves off and your hands are gonna fall off, you gotta bundle them up. It's not that cold. We got a really busy agenda today, um, so bear with me as I break this whole thing down. Um, what we're gonna do today is go up to the lake. We're gonna hike up to the lake. That's it. Miguel says that he saw a snowflake. If it starts to snow, and it looks like it could, if it starts to snow, it'll be the first snow this year up here in the Sierras. That'd certainly be fun. So if it does start to snow, we'll share it with you guys, of course. It's official. Snow. Uh, we could, it's confirmed. The snowflakes are starting to come down. We'll see how much snow we get. Miguel thought it'd be a good idea to get the wood chopped and prepared for a campfire before it really comes down. So we make sure we have enough dry wood. Um, winter's coming. We have pretty consistent snow now. Uh, you might see, yeah, you know, by consistent, I don't mean heavy, but you might see it catching the light. We did not catch any fish. I think it started snowing just a little bit and the fish are like, we don't eat when it snows. Perry, uh -uh. nope. I think that's what happened. Uh, but we had a great time. Now we're back at the truck. We are going to get ready for this evening. Probably build a fire. It is now pretty darn cold. No, was that the first or the last? So yeah. I'm a Star Wars fan, but I'm a Star Wars fan. I don't even, this, these latest ones, I, I don't even. I'm not upset, Blue. Blue, I'm not upset. For, uh, for our steak tonight. All right. You're starting with chimichurri, huh? Mm-hmm. Fried oregano, paprika. 
Did you say something about me helping? Yeah. Why, why would you say something like that? Miguel, I think I just detected a flurry. Huh. I think I just detected a flurry of snow. What's a flurry? It's a little of snow, meaning more snow. Uh, I think we might get some real snow. How do you know that? Because I just experienced a flurry of snow. What's a flurry? It's the, like a... A lot of... You snow. remember, okay, you remember the, the old, the Christmas specials? Yeah. I'm Mr. Heat Miser, I'm Mr. Freeze. No. And freeze, and he'd show up, and the flurry would go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a flurry of snow. I don't know why my truck always smells like campfire. Snow update. It's getting a little heavier now. I think it's about 2:30, maybe 2:45. You can see it's pretty dark. I want to point some things out. I'm going to point the camera over there and you're going to see that you can see the snow um, coming down. And then you can might be able to see some specks here. But look over here in this tree line, in the tree line. And then if you can see over here. So we might, we might get some real snow, some legit snow. Hey dad, close up the truck. <laughs> Please. Okay, here we go. Now it's real snow. So that's stuff that I pointed out. Those trees I pointed out just a little while ago that I said we could still see. We can't even see those trees anymore. So yeah, it's coming this way. We're gonna get some snow. Please. Miguel. What? I need to batten down the hatches. Oh, we might need to pack up. <laughs> so, fine dining might not occur. Yeah. We gotta close up the hatch before it gets all. Miguel, it is coming. Yeah. I can't even see 200 yards that way. Yeah, it's gonna be cold. If it gets really gnarly, we'll probably stay in our stay with our vehicle, call for help. Yeah. And get evac and see the 80 in the spring. Yeah. Holy cow, I just hope we can get out of here. We're in the truck. The snow is getting insane. thicker. Yeah. We're having a little snack. I'm trying to get through to Corey on the Garmin, but the Garmin's been spinning for about 20 minutes and snow might, you know, the, the atmosphere might be playing havoc with it, but we might just need to bug out because it's not stopping and uh, we can't get a weather report right now. Uh, and that's the thing, if we knew the weather was gonna be okay, if it was gonna lighten up, that's one thing, but if it's gonna keep dumping, that's something else. I don't think we wanna leave the 80 here until spring. All right, you guys. So finally got through, we got through to Corey she said, get the heck out of there ASAP. We used the Garmin in reach, it finally went through. And uh, we got another front coming in. The original report was, hey, you're not gonna get very much snow up there. It's just gonna be a little tiny bit. So we thought it'd be okay through the morning. But if I stay here till morning, we're never gonna get the 80 out of here until spring. So we're not gonna be able to see the trail. There's already, you guys can see, there's already six inches of snow on the ground. So we're not gonna be able to see where we're going. You may as well get us all the way out of here um that last slick rock is going to be an issue but it's operation get the heck out of dodge
Come on. Beautiful. This is the hardest part of the trail. I don't know how we're gonna get out of this one. Miguel, you got a lot of technical stuff now. Go, go. Yeah, okay, now turn driver, go. Hold, okay, ho. Okay, go. Yeah, go. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Okay, ho, ho, ho. Okay, come on. Try. There you go, go. 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 There you go. Yeah, doggy. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go on, go on. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. I'm proud of my boy. <laughs> so, a trail. Just rock crawling. That's one thing. Doing it in the snow, that's an entirely different thing. All right. Miguel, you got the hell out of here. So, good job. Uh, What's that? Oh, I'll bet she didn't. Miguel and I are out. This is the hardest part. We're gonna roll down the hill a ways and see if we can get out of the snow and get down to some lower altitude. Maybe find another camp spot. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we slid off the road and uh, I'm gonna call it a crash. I don't know how much damage we've done to the truck. I mean, there was just no traction whatsoever. It just slid out to the side, black ice under the, under the snow. We hit that boulder when we came off the road. Um, definitely damage. Uh, and now we're gonna try and get out. Uh, maybe traction boards, maybe just brute force, see if I can get in gear and back it up.
were out. But as soon as I got up out of there, she don't feel right. So something's going on. Quick spot check, I don't see anything obvious. I'm gonna try and get us off this mountain. So we're back on the road. Um, we're going very slow. I'm at 10 miles an hour. I'm watching. There, there has to be major mechanical damage based on the accident we were just in. Slid off the road at the last minute to get perpendicular to the slope. I turned passenger so that we wouldn't roll and that worked. Unfortunately, there was a large boulder where we landed and it just crunched. I know my, my top roof rock rack is forward about four inches, it came forward. Um, but looking at my gauges, it's running fine. There doesn't appear to be any mechanical issues at this speed. It's not pulling one way or another. Um, so we are going to get to a decent spot, flat ground, and we'll do a thorough, thorough visual inspection and see what we're dealing with. We have all lights. All the lights are... Doesn't... I can't, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Okay, that looks like it hit. Maybe. I can't believe it. I can't see, I can't see any damage from that wreck. There's got to be. Once we get out of the snow, things dry off and I can crawl around, I'm gonna find something. But you guys, it was a, it, it was a smash and a crunch. So, and against a boulder. Well, it looks like that lights out. I'm gonna pop the hood because I want to look at the batteries, make sure they're in position. I'm gonna pop the hood, buddy. Let's get back to civilization. We're here. We got a hotel tonight because I don't trust that the rig is roadworthy. Um, and so we're going to get it tomorrow. We'll wake up and uh, we'll really check it out, give it a full visual inspection and see what we're dealing with. But, but you guys, I know I've said the 80 series is really strong. But the fact that I'm standing here talking to you right now, I thought there's no way we're getting out of that. We crashed it into a boulder and then drove it back onto the road and all the way down the hill. Now there's no snow here at this elevation. And uh, I just, there's no way I thought it was going to be roadworthy. And I can't find anything wrong with it. <laughs> I've been looking. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see what it looks like in the morning. I thought it was raining, raining, but it's no longer raining, raining. It was when I looked up there. Show that spot that we just, okay, hold on, right there. Okay, and then where's the other spot? Not even. 
right there. And then that was already like that. Yeah. I bashed that long ago. Clearly the um, shackles took a hit. These things? Yeah. Yeah. See, it's still got dust on them. But I mean, that doesn't matter. Right. And that's all I can see. Okay. I'm gonna crawl under the truck and see what we're dealing with underneath. Under here, I, uh, I don't see nothing. I uh, can't believe it. Yeah, we slid off the road. Miguel and I both, when we came to a stop against that rock, we we're like, well, we're here for the night. The fact that we ended up locking the differentials, backing it up out of there, and right now it seems to be running and driving just fine with no apparent damage is absolutely crazy. I will show you guys uh, one thing that happened so you guys know I'm not making, up, making the whole thing up. <laughs> Hi Blue, are you driving? So if you'll notice, see up here where my hand is, Miguel? Um, the whole rack moved forward and so this is standing away from, it moved forward about four inches, at least four inches because this whole thing uh, is in front of the windshield now and the, the um, limb risers fell off and so now I've got them anchored to a different location so that they'll at least stay there. And if you look at the, the, the way these are clamped onto the drip rail with enough force, and believe me, I crank these on, right? I mean, I mean they, it's been on here for 10 years, but with enough force, the whole rack went forward about uh, between four and six inches. So I'm gonna need to move that. But if that, if that is all that happened, Holy cow. So now we're going to drive to Dublin and see how she drives.